Kill basic tutorial six. Welcome once again to this new section of Kill basic tutorial. Let's start with label. We are talking about label for today. For us to understand how labels work on Kill basic, let's try to explain it in simple terms. In the chemical or chemistry laboratory, basic and acidic substances are indicated with label. HCl acid is contained in a glass container since it will dissolve plastic. We know how acid behaves. Most of the times, it appears colorless or transparent and hardly to determine the kind of acid contained. Therefore, each glass container is identified with a label, either H2SO4 sulfuric acid or HNO3 which is nitric acid or HCl hydrochloric acid. It must be written and placed on the container to identify it as a label. So it identifies a specific container. Okay. Let's do another example. Let's say if there are three brown buses and you want to identify the one containing USB modem and headset, you give it a label. So one bus out of these three buses contains this ICT tools. So you have to give it a label to identify this ICT tools from the other buses. That label is said to identify the ICT tool bus from the other buses which means that label is a locator of things in QBasic programming. A label tells the QBasic application where we want to find something unlike opening different containers to search for a specific acid or maybe opening buses to find a specific tool. The goto and the gosap can often be used by placing a label on the program. Goto Goto gives the execution point to a given label aiding us in jumping to certain points in our program we can use goto by placing a label somewhere in our program let's do this example let's print zero and let's go to the label goto means jumping jumping from one point to another point the definite article there means that we know the label that you are jumping print 10 so we are jumping 10 the label print 20 the label we will print 20 so we are jumping only 10 so from 0 to 20 so we are jumping from a certain point to another point therefore when we press the f5 key we have 0 and we have 20 we can press any key to continue let's do one more example let's print a let's go to the label um print b so therefore we are jumping the b though we, we printed it but we are jumping the label print C, the label, we will print the label C. So the A will be printed, the C will be printed, but the B will be jumped. We have our A and C. GoSAP. The GoSAP is almost the same as the GoTo, only if there is a return statement. It is almost the same, only if there is a return statement. The GoSAP is in the form of abbreviation. Its full meaning is go to subroutine, which means that there is a temporary jump into a specific point in the code. It is temporary jump because the go sub command must be matched with a return statement. Definitely, there must be a return statement. This means that the go to is a permanent jump, which is distinct from the go sub. The go sub is a temporary jump. After coding the go sub statement, the return continues the execution of the program. Let's try some practical examples under the GoSAP. Let's clear our screen and let's say for a number n is equal to 1 or for variable n is equal to number 1 to 30, step 5. Meaning that we have 1, we are stepping 5, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So from 1, we move to 6. That is the stepping. We will jump 5 numbers after the 1 to the next number. So the next n means that the next number that follows in that sequence or that order goes up square. The square is the multiplication of um two numbers, and these two numbers are the same numbers. For example, if we have five, five square is the same as five times five. So let's end the square and let's print n and let's print n times n. The n times n is the same as n square. So at long last we have our return statement today. Because we are doing the go sub, which means that this is a temporary jump, a temporary jump, unlike the go to command. So we want to see um, something like this as, as the outcome. 
So we have 1 to 6, 6 to 11. In that sequence, we are stepping 5 numbers. Let's run it. 1 times 1 or 1 square is the same as 1. 6 times 6, 36 or 6 square, 36 in this order. So you can take your calculator and punch these numbers to verify the digits here. But you get the same answer. So 21 square is 441. One more example to go. Let's print program 1 in inverted commerce. So program 1 will be printed automatically. Go sub sub 1. We have our apostrophe there. If our apostrophe is having color red or color blue, the code that will be that will be typed after the apostrophe will have the same color as the apostrophe. And the apostrophe can also ignore the, the numbers after it. It can be used in place of the RAM. That's the apostrophe. So we end sub 1, we print program 2. So the program 2 will also be printed. But at long last, we have our return statement there, which means that we will return. That's the go sub command. So let's see the outcome or the output. We have program 1 being printed. We have program 2 being printed too. So we we'll just cover some small portion of labels, which is the go to and the go sub. But there are a lot to cover, there are a lot to cover. So please stay tuned with me in this channel. I'll move on to the next session of QBasic tutorial.